good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm just curious, as you guys heading to training camp, what have you kind of pinpointed as some of the goals that you guys want to achieve this year? Be better than last year. Uh, establish our identity, you know, from jump, which I feel like we're on the right road towards. Uh, just having, you know, the whole team here a month ago, guys in early, uh, happy to be in, uh, and just working hard, you know, building chemistry in the locker room outside of the facility and, you know, carry on and translate to the court. So, you know, be better than last year uh, and win and, you know, be a top four seed and, you know, uh, being a playing team is not an option. Hey, Jante, I asked Addy about earlier. How excited are you to play with him again? I mean, when you heard that he's be joining you? I mean, I made sure his locker was next to mine. So, uh, you know, that's, that's one of my vets. You know, a uh, great friend of mine. You know, I look at him as family. Uh, even bringing him to the team, you know, when I was talking to Lynn, you know, pointing all them guys, he's he's a hard worker, you know, he's a great guy. Uh, he's almost like he's perfect. Nobody's perfect, but, you know, he's a high energy guy, high character. Like I said, work hard. And he's only going to affect, you know, everybody around, you know, the organization in a great way. Besides that, this will be your first year having a full season under the tutelage of Coach Quinn. Uh, what do you think that'll do for your game and defensively, and then how would that help you as a leader of the Hawks? I mean, you know, Quinn, like I spoke highly of him, you know, that's just me speaking the truth and natural, uh, you know, relationship that me and him have. Uh, you know, it, it, ever since he got here, it's been that, uh, you know, it, it also helps he's a Seattle guy, like I always say. Uh, you know, but even back starting in July when he, you know, was able to bring the whole staff around and, you know, I committed to being around the summer league team and all the coaches and just, you know, putting the extra work and, trying to, you know, see where we're going uh, and, you know, what he's trying to, the identity he's trying to build for this team, uh, you know, so it's as an individual, it's been great, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure he can tell you just, you know, me showing up, doing what I love to do, which is work hard, uh, you know, being around everybody and, you know, I think it would be great I always said my better days was ahead, you know, even when I was younger, you know, uh, as I mature, grow up and learn this game and get more and more comfortable with this game. Uh, you know, but I think it'll be great, you know, as an individual, but, you know, mainly as us as a whole, you know, we're going to build our identity and the fans to have, you know, great things to look forward and, you know, Atlanta will be a great place, you know, to watch, you know, when you're watching the team. Hey, DJ, uh, since you've arrived, you've been one of the better leaders or bigger leaders on the team, and even in the summer league, you know, the people talking about how you reached out to you and all that. Uh, what do you think it is, excuse me, that allows you to naturally be a leader? I mean, it's just who I am as a person. I don't know how to fake or pretend, you know. Uh, you know, that's just who I've always been since a kid. You know, my family, friends, anybody that knows me since I was, you know, a kid, they tell you I've always, you know, been a leader, never followed, you know, a trend or the crowd or nothing. So, you know, that's just me being me. Uh, and, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to help everybody uh, because we always can help each other and be there for each other and grow with each other, you know. So, you know, me, just if I see something, it's not just me, you know, preaching it. Uh, I got to live by and stand by it as well. So if I'm telling a young guy or anybody to work harder, you know, I can't be out there slacking or missing workouts or going through the motions. So, you know, I lead by example, you know, actions speak louder than words, and that's pretty much how you put that. Hey, DeJounte. Been in Atlanta for a year now. Uh, how do you feel the city has impacted you this last year, and what have you enjoyed most about being here? I mean, I love the culture. You know, I love what they stand for. Uh, you know, and like I said, continue to just get comfortable and learn the city, learn the history. You know, you know, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, but like I said, I love it here. Uh, you know, even the impact. You know, I love the culture. Like I said, I can relate to a lot of it. So. You know, we feel well, um, and I continue to you know, live here longer and, you know, continue to learn about everything about it. Uh, DeJounte, uh, you shot 34% last year on the, uh, from three on over five attempts a game. What has been your offensive focus this offseason in addition to the strong three-point shooting to make an already elite offense even stronger? I mean, being consistent and being more efficient, and, you know, I think that goes into you know, what kind of team we are, that, that word I've been saying, building the identity from the jump. Uh, you know, you, you don't want to be just a, a player just out there playing, going through the motions. You know, it's a team game, one as a team game. So, you know, I keep it simple. You know, I work on everything. You know, I never live on myself, never get content or comfortable. So, you know, I've been working extremely hard and, uh, you know, it, 
helps having, you know, coaches, you know, building a real identity and what we're trying to be as a team, not just as an individual. And that's where when you have that, it helps you as an individual be efficient uh, and more consistent in the right way. Um, so, uh, this summer, uh, what was the experience like getting to play with Mohamed Gay uh, at uh, Isaiah Thomas' uh, tournament up in Washington? And like, how have you uh, begun to help him prepare for his first NBA season? I mean, first of all, he went to Wazoo, so that's like our rival. <laughs> but nah, no, serious note, uh, he's, a, he's a great young man, a uh, high character guy. He works extremely hard. Uh, you know, like I told him, you're supposed to be here, you know, so act like it in a humble way. Um, you know, and you don't really got to tell him too much. You know, like I said, he, he's a mature, high character guy, and he works extremely hard. So, you know, me, I'm just doing my part, you know, trying to show all of them, not just him, you know, that this is possible. And if you learn and put the work in and don't be that guy that you act like you know everything from now even to, you know, if you make it past five, ten years, you're always willing to learn and work hard. You know, you just, you'll see yourself grow and great things will happen for you. So. You know, he's a great person, and you know, I look forward to helping him, not just now, but you know, here, but forever, as much as I can. Hey, Dejante. How you doing? Um, I know you said you wanted to spend some time with your family in the off-season. Just over the years, how has your approach to the off-season changed, and how are you able to balance working out and spending that time with your I mean, just with my family, though, they understand, uh, you know, my position. They understand who I am as a person. You know, they know I always want to grow um, and I always use, you know, there's, there's always room to improve as a man, uh, as a person, father, basketball player, whatever I'm doing. Uh, and like I said, having a family, you know, family, friends, and people around me because you can have people around you that don't understand that, you know, and this, I'm in control of my own destiny. So, you know, me wanting to be a great man, a great father, uh, a great family man in general, but also a great basketball player. You know, it comes from growing and a lot of work. So, like I said, having the people around me, you know, understanding that, you know, make sure you're at the gym, which they don't have to tell me, but, you know, they always tell me, they always, they're with me uh, in the gym, or if they're not, you know, they know what I'm doing. So, it, nothing changes. Uh, you know, obviously, having two daughters, that changes, but, you know, you, you find a balance and you get your work done and, you know, you have a support system and you get through it that way. Jante, it's been a lot of movement in the Eastern Conference during this offseason. So this will be the first time, well, this will be another another season, excuse me, where we'll get to see you and Trey in the backcourt together. What are your thoughts on where you guys stand in the Eastern Conference and just some of the moves that have been made this year? I mean, as far as the moves, I'm a competitor, so, you know, I want to play the best. You know, I never signed up to play this game to go through the motions or not compete at a high level. So, you know, that's out of my control. That's out of the Atlanta Hawks control with everything going on around the league. But, you know, I think it's great for the NBA, uh, you know, and great for that team. If that's how they feel. They made the right moves, the wrong moves, whatever. But it's out of my control uh, and our control as a whole. But, you know, as far as me and Trey, you know, I, I said this, you know, to him, you know, and to other people, you know, and it starts with us, but we also determine, you know, how this team could be. So if we're unselfish, the whole team's going to be unselfish. If we're selfish, it's going to be a selfish team. So if we want to win and go, you know, a long way and make this thing fun, because you look around the room from the young guys to the older guys, you know, we got, you know, a great roster and high character guys. So, you know, like I said, with me and Trey, you know, it, it starts with us as far as if we're going to be unselfish, then you're going to see a great team, an unselfish team, and everybody's going to have fun. DeJounte, I was curious to know, what was the importance for you to commit to this team long-term this offseason rather than waiting and maybe having more options or more money on the table, that sort of thing, but you wanted to do it now? I mean, I'm a loyal guy. I stand on loyalty with my family, my friends, my work. Uh, you know, loyalty is just who I am as a person. You know, I don't know nothing else but loyalty and love. Uh, you know, so there was no surprise, you know, when the trade happened, when I came from San Antonio, I was already committed to, you know, Atlanta, even though I had a year or two years of left of my contract. But, you know, I, it's easier said than done, you know. Um, and, and like I've always said, I count the years, I don't count the money. You know, I don't count other players' pockets, other men's pockets. I wasn't raised that way. You know, I come from zero. So, you know, all of this is just a, a truly blessing and, and a testament of my hard work and who I am as a person. So. 
You know, like I said, I'm loyal and I was committed from day one and nothing never changed. The uh, Hawks have another international game this year, playing in Mexico City. Um, I was just curious, what what, what are you excited most about playing on a world stage like that, having brushed upon your Spanish at all? I mean, I, I've, in San Antonio, I've been there, what, three times, so, you know, I'm familiar with going over to Mexico. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere, you know, from, you know, off the floor to, to on the floor. It's going to be a, you know, high excitement game. Uh, the fans love basketball. You know, as everybody, if you haven't been there, you'll see, you know, and if you've been there, you understand and know that. And, uh, you know, I'm always down to, like I said, play basketball at the highest level. And, you know, the fans is a big part of it. So to see the NBA continue to expand and, you know, have these games, you know, in another country just shows where, you know, basketball is going, you know, for from the U.S. standpoint. Uh, DeShante. All right, Um How do you feel this team can take a leap defensively this season? I mean, for us to be great, we have to, uh, you know, even, even start with myself, you know, uh, I have to be better, uh, you know, just taking accountability, you know, being better, and, you know, doing it with my actions. But, you know, for where we want to go, which should be to the highest level and, you know, uh, starting with that, it starts on the defense and not just one guy or three guys. It's the whole team, you know, whoever's on the floor, which is five guys at all time. And everybody has to be on the same page, you know, and it's a pride thing at the end of the day. So. You know, for where we want to go, you know, defense is the number one thing, and then everything else will fall in place. Now that you've uh, stepped, sorry. now that you've established yourself kind of here as a leader, and you're going to be here long term, what do you think right now this team's identity is, and what do you want it to be eventually? That's what we still build it, but what I can say is in the right direction from the young guys that's here to the older guys, or the guys that's been here, just everybody in the whole, you know, you can see. You can see the difference from the front office, you know, the coaching staff down to the players. And like I said, you know, you had, you know, pretty much 90% of the team to almost the whole team here in August. And, you know, me, you know, going into my eighth year, uh, I've never seen that. You know, you always got the veteran guys and older guys in general just doing their own thing, which they can. Uh, but like I said, seeing the commitment of not only the front office, not only the coaches, but the players and all of us here early and competing at a high level, learning, smiling, and, and just working hard shows that, you know, we're building a, a great identity and we're going in the right direction to, you know, winning basketball. All right, last question. I know you only spent one season with him, but what was the initial reaction to John Trey? I mean, I'm sure he's a big leader in the locker room with you guys, Trey and John. I mean, you know, John's a, he's a, like I said, we speak about the high character. He, he was like the heart and soul. You know, when I got here, just observing, you know, I'm somebody who observed any room I'm in uh, and just try to get to know people. And obviously I know John for a long time. He spent over seven years in, you know, Washington where I'm from. So, you know, I know of him, know him, and uh, I always knew he was a great guy. But until you're around somebody, you really, you know, get to see who they are as a person and how they operate. So. You know, John, like I said, was a heart and soul, just his energy. You know, we could have lost two, three games in a row. We could have won three games in a row. He was the same person, and he treated everybody with respect. And, you know, lastly, he worked hard. So, you know, if he just keep those things, you know, he'll be great. And this is the NBA. You know, you, like I said, as a player, you control what you can control. And trade, wave, and sign with new teams, that's out of your control. You, know, you work hard, you learn, be a great person. And, you know, the rest, you know, falls in place. So, you know, I, I wish him the best. I still talk to him, you know, a lot. Uh, and he's with great people in Utah, and he'll have, you know, a great time in Utah. Thanks, DJ. Yes, sir. Thank you.